Hello, and welcome to our National Day of Prayer here for the town of Dagsboro. Unfortunately, we are unable to get together like we normally do, but thank you for tuning in and coming um, to a time of prayer with local pastors as we pray for our country and everything that is happening in our world and in the different areas that we'll be praying for. I hope you find our time of prayer uplifting and that uh, you continue to pray for our country and our world as we face this pandemic. And we look forward to next year when hopefully we will be able to join together at the Dagsboro Fire Department. Thank you once again for joining us. Now. Hello, my name is Bradley Shutt. I'm the pastor of Millville United Methodist Church, and I am blessed to be able to be here to lead us in prayer for our federal, state, and local leaders. And in that spirit, let us remember the words of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, which says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And let us pray. God, we do thank you for the women and men who serve our country in leadership roles and for their families. We give thanks for those who carry out leadership roles for our state, our county, our towns, and other local ways as well. Please provide all of these leaders with reminders each day of why they answered a call to dedicate their lives to public service and use that commitment to encourage them. Give them all peace when their work takes them away from their families and personal lives. We also pray specifically for the wives, husbands, and children of our leaders. We ask that you draw near to them and give them the wisdom, especially in this time, on how to best support one another while their loved one is away working. And we are also so grateful for the staff of all of our leaders, Lord. They have such an important job keeping the offices running as they should. Thank you for the ways you have gifted them to support our leaders so well. Wrap your arms around all of these public servants and leaders, these women and men, to show them love, grace, strength, and encouragement. Provide them with the knowledge needed to approach each situation in the best way possible. Help them to know you and see your presence and hear and follow your guidance in the work they do. And gracious God, give them the stamina to approach each day and to find a balance between work and life so that they would be sustained as they serve others. And God, we are so grateful to be living in a democracy where many play a part in making sure the needs and desires of our nation, state, county, and town's citizens are heard and met. As our leaders work together to find solutions to difficult problems, especially in the midst of the pandemic we face now, we ask that you, God, guide them to speak respectfully and with humility to one another. Help them to show Christ-like love to those they interact with and be an advocate for their constituents and others. And Lord, we thank you for leaders who care about the issues impacting the most vulnerable. We ask that you help all leaders to care for people in need, especially children, our elderly neighbors, and those most vulnerable in other desperate situations. Press on the hearts of constituents a desire and drive to reach out to their government leaders on issues surrounding poverty and soften leaders' hearts towards these issues that affect all of us and all of our communities. We are so grateful that we have leaders that listen to us. God, please be with all of our leaders at all levels of government as they weigh the pros and cons of each request and need before them. Give them wisdom on how to best represent everyone. And God, we also ask that you give our leaders courage so that even when it is hard, they would continue to boldly represent their constituents' needs and those of the most vulnerable, those whose voices are often overlooked. May they hear you so that they may speak for all. 
And we pray for all of them and all of this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And we are recording. Good morning. I'm Patrick Miller. I'm the Vice Mayor of Dagsboro. My prayer today will be about law enforcement officers, veterans, and active duty soldiers. Dear Lord, today we honor our law enforcement officers, our veterans, and our active duty soldiers, all who are worthy men and women that are giving their best when they are called upon to serve and protect. We pray that you will bless them for their unselfish service, continued struggle to preserve our freedoms and safety. We thank God for giving them the strength that exceeds any measure of courage that allows them to run toward danger each day so that others can be safe. We thank God for showing us what it means to put others first and for showing us your bright light in these darkest of times. We want you to know that we appreciate you more than you could possibly know, and that we are praying for you as you go about your difficult and dangerous job. As more people get sick, our law enforcement officers and active duty soldiers are working longer hours with fewer supplies and with more risk of contracting the coronavirus themselves. Renew their energy and sustain them on long shifts. Bring your protection upon them as they work with our community. Multiply their supplies so they have personal protective items needed to stay safe on the job. Inspire and strengthen the researchers developing better tests to diagnose the virus, create vaccines to prevent it, and identify protocols to eliminate the disease's spread. Praying also that you will stop, this will stop with no more causes of infection. To quote part of Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. And let me end with, you are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences of your choice. I choose to stay home because if I'm sick without knowing it, I don't want to possibly infect someone else. So be patient or be a patient. The choice is yours. Amen. Now. Good morning. This is Wayne Bowden. I'm with Dagsboro Fire Company. Uh, today I'm going to be praying for the first responders. I'm going to start off to reading the farmer's prayer. When I, I am called to duty, God, whatever flames may range, give me the strength to save some life, whatever it be age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late or save an older person from the heart of the faith. Enable me to be alert and to hear the wicked shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect their property. And if according to your will, I have to lose my life, please bless your protection and my family, my children, and my wife. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come today to say thank you, Lord. We ask you to protect all of our first responders with the handling of this fire situation, the EMTs, the paramedics, the firefighters go out on a call not knowing what to expect. Please place your arms around them and make them safe. Be with the families that have lost loved ones in, in the fire service and this forest so they can come back home safe and healthy to be with their family. Lord, we give you 
the praise and the glory for all these these words. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, folks. I just want to thank you for um, taking time to pray. Uh, my name is Doug Griffith, um, and I serve in the Dover District of the Pendel Conference. Without further ado, let's get right to it. I want to pray today, and I'm asking you to pray with me. The educational institutions and administrators uh, are dealing. We will be going through transitions for a while, it seems, and we need to be praying for it. So will you pray with me today? Dear God, we come to you today asking your blessing to administrators. Thank you that they have answered the call to lead our teachers in schools so that children might learn in a safe and nurturing environment it's conducive to academic and personal success. Plus our school administrators with wisdom, integrity, humor, patience, and physical and mental energy are equal to their tasks. Bless them with strong support from parents, teachers in the community, enable and empower our administrators, Father, to act as encouragers for our teachers and students. May they be approachable, friendly, and professional. They support one another. Give them insights, maybe follow unique gifts, strengths, and abilities that they may not have um, had in the past. They can engage each other together and contribute to the common good. We pray for patience. We pray for wisdom for our administrators when complaints arise. During these tough times, Father, grace to listen. We pray for parents that they will be reasonable and patient. Give them calm as they listen and make decisions moving forward. We pray that parents will first communicate with their child's teacher before escalating any type of conflict at this time, make parents aware that the school is working in the best interest of all. And they seek solutions to improve moving forward. Other times there's anxiety and things that just arise. There's deaths, there's natural disasters, because we don't know what tomorrow brings. But help us, help our administrators to be instruments of comfort and stability, bringing the faculty and the school community together. To allow your caring presence to be known and shown in healing ways. We pray for our school administrators' role in keeping our school campuses safe, safe at this time from violence threats, and boiling, boiling, no matter where that is. May your protecting angels surround them and our schools. We pray that our school administrators may have wisdom and discernment as they deal with discipline problems, even from afar, uh, as they gather and use these great gifts you bestowed upon us electronically, Father, um, that they may be disciplined and lifted up in this new way. We pray that so that we might be orderly and stress-free. Allow the students to grow and prosper. As they move forward, Father, we ask that all administrators, the students, Father, that are um, coping with strength, use these outside resources as needed, the Father, that they be given psychological help when they need it. Special accommodations for those who need it. May they all be readily available to our administrators. As we pray, we are aware 
follow that being a school administrator can be lonely and difficult job. Send them the encouragers and relief wherever it be needed. Have demanding workloads to prevent them from having quality family time and personal time. Give them healthy ways to relieve stress and ways to stay active physically. They help them feel loved and accepted by you in their most difficult and professional and personal lives at this time. Father, I ask you to reward our school administrators by allowing them to see the fruits of their labor displayed in the success that is in their teachers and students. Give our school administrators joy in seeing their school become a central part of the greater community a place that has a family feel. Set their prayer today, Father, as an expression of our gratefulness to you and to them for their dedication in making our schools a central and vital part of our community. Amen. God bless each and every one of you as we move forward. Lord God, thank you for uh, this time of prayer. Uh, I'm privileged and honored to be able to participate in this prayer time. Uh, and I want you to pray with me as I pray. Uh, and I want you to pray expecting, expecting that God is going to hear uh, and, and uh, move upon our prayer petitions. Lord God, I thank you for our local churches and for the pastors that are appointed there. I pray, Lord God, that you would bless us uh, in our desire to serve you as we serve your people and your people uh, means the church. We pray, Lord God, that uh, your people who are faithful leaders in all of our churches would be blessed, uh, that they would indeed rise up, Lord God, to, uh, to pray and to seek your face. Lord God, I thank you that the entrance of your word brings light. I thank you that your word is alive and full of power. I thank you, Lord, that as clergy and laity working together, and as we work together in our community, uh, whether we're feeding or blessing or ministering to those in our community, uh, or whether we're on the mission field, Lord God, I ask that all the missions that are uh, uh, supported by our, our corporate churches, uh, Lord God, that you would continue to bless them uh, as you bless us uh, with the presence of your most Holy Spirit, your spirit of power and I love your spirit of discipline and self-control. Strengthen your people, strengthen your church, Lord God. Enable your saints during this time of trouble to reach out to a hurting world. Almighty and compassionate Father God, deliver your church from the uh, control and dominion of failure and doubt and fear, Lord God. We ought not be fearing. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to remind us, remind us by your Spirit, that we who serve you have been transferred into the kingdom of God, into your kingdom, Lord God. You own everything. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, um, and, and Lord God, all that was ever created, you created. Uh, and so when we think about finances in this difficult time, Lord God, I know that you can help us make our payroll. Uh, and I pray, Lord God, that you would provide in ways that are just amazing to us. Enable us to know that the only way we will succeed in these pandemic days is if we stay plugged into your son, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you would remind us that we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, that we are overcomers uh, in regards to this virus 19 thing, which we have heard called the enemy. Uh, I pray, Lord God, uh, that you would just continually remind your church that the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. They're not carnal. They're not of the flesh but they are mighty through the, uh, to God through the pulling down of strongholds. Lord God, you uh, tell us to, to uh, pray in faith, believing that those evil things will be torn down and defeated. Lord, strengthen your church, strengthen your people, and strengthen our missionaries uh, in the communities round about and around the world. Uh, Lord, let your word go forth. 
into this world, we pray. Amen and amen. And all God's children said, amen. God bless you. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Missy Rikitsky. I'm the pastor at Salem Church in Selbyville, Delaware. And it is my great pleasure to be here with uh, everyone as we come together as a group to lift our entire nation up to the Lord and to, to let him know that we are counting on him in all things and that our hope in all of this, our hope has always been in, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My uh, prayer is for healthcare workers. I come from a family of healthcare workers. My, my dad was a doctor. My mom was a respiratory um, therapist. Uh, that's how they met. Uh, it has always been near and dear to my heart as I hear about the stresses that so many healthcare workers are going through and just uh, it hurts my heart. And so today we want to lift them uh, in our prayer. Will you please pray with me? Creator and redeemer and sustainer of all things, you are God alone. And we give you thanks and praise in this day. Lord, you see and you know and you feel and you experience everything that we are going through right now in our country. The anxiety, the fears, the unknowing, the almost the unrest, the anger, not knowing how to, to deal with so many of the emotions that people are going through. And no more so than those who are at the absolute forefront of all of this, those who are caring for our ill, who are experiencing and seeing the COVID-19 firsthand every day over and over again. Lord, I lift those healthcare workers to you right now, doctors, nurses, uh, anyone who is coming in contact with those who are so, so sick, Lord, they may be the only human people that, that they see throughout the day. They can't see their, their loved ones. And uh, so our health workers are, are adding on to what they already have on their shoulders. Lord, you know exactly what they need. Lord, they they just need a respite. They need to feel your peace and your comfort at this time. Lord, I pray that they will be protected from this virus as they care for others in such a personal way. Lord, that their families will be protected, that they will be able to feel safe going home to their loved ones, to their children, to their uh, maybe their elderly parents, Lord, and that uh, there will be a safety in that. Lord, I lift them to you, and I ask you, Lord, to give them discerning hearts, discerning minds, as they continue to uh, just give care in a way that is compassionate, that is understanding, that gives hope to those who may be feeling hopeless right now. And so, Lord, just be with them in a mighty way. Cover their own insecurities and cover their uh, powerlessness right now and their helplessness and help them to know that they are doing a mighty work for you and that they will be able to see a cure coming soon and they will be able to know that you are the God who is the healer of us all, that you are the great physician and that they can count on you each and every day as they uh, continue to fight for us. Lord, I lift them to you. I ask you, Lord, to uh, be at work in them and in our country today. And we give you all praise and glory for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Pastor Blair Hall and I serve St. George's United Methodist Church. And it is my honor to come to you to pray for our um, families and our children. 
especially in this time where things are different and out of the normal for parents and for families and especially our kids as they are uh, staying at home to do school and parents trying to keep them motivated and also trying to work and get around their schedule to get uh, their kids educated. So if you please pray with me as we lift up our families and our children. Gracious and heavenly God, we praise you for your love and your faithfulness. We thank you for your protection and care over our families. Thank you that you give us the power to love well, the wisdom to lead, to teach our children. You know, we know that you are for us and help us not to forget that, that you fight for our families today and every day. You are the redeemer, restorer, and friend. And we believe you have good what is in store. And we confess that some days parenting is tough. Many days we can feel anxious or overwhelmed. We ask that you would make us more like you and more aware of your constant presence in our, in our lives. Lord, help us to release our children to you so that you are free and fully accomplished all that your desire in them and through them. Lord, please fill our families with the truth that covers us with your favor. Lord, being a parent is tough, especially if it's a single parent home, Lord, and with trying to teach them school through the different uh, stay-at-home learning platforms. And Lord, I just pray that you have that patience and wisdom on the families. I know a lot of families are struggling, Lord, because of uh, the pandemic, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, Lord, help those families cope well and not take out uh, the stress on one another. Lord, I lift up our children, Lord, that they can stay connected with their friends in, in uh, positive ways, Lord. I pray that you give them the energy and the ability that they need to conquer the online learning platforms that they are now uh, learning, Lord. I pray that as a lot of our students are anxious and worried about what the future holds and when they'll be able to see their friends again and, and so forth, Lord, I just pray that you bring peace upon them, Lord, peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, we just thank you that you are in control and we pray that you see us through this and see our families and our children so that when we come out of this, they are stronger families, and there are better children, Lord. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. I am uh, Pastor Casey, serving Bethel United Methodist Church in Daxborough. Today, I am praying for all who passed away from the COVID-19. So let us pray together. Most merciful God, who is one God for all people, we are deeply despaired by the unbelievable numbers of dead people from this killer virus. With grief and tears, we are asking you to console the bereaved families of the 50 states of our nation as well as the rest of nations. We are also humbly asking you to accept all who died from the abrupt attacks of this killing virus, killer virus, to the heavenly paradise. Without your acceptance, we know that there's no comfort to those who died from this totally unprecedented human misfortunes. 
Lord, have mercy upon them. They will die because this nation and as well as the rest of nations were not prepared for combating against this totally unexperienced virus. Our governments couldn't provide those who died with the vaccine when they were infected. So we feel guiltiness amid deep sorrow and we know that only the Creator God will make all who died resurrected. That is our hope. So, O oh, gracious Lord, pour out heavenly mercy upon all the people under the fear of pandemic. They need your comforting grace. So remove blue mood, fatigue, irritation, anger, and even depression from their mind, spirit, soul, and body. This is very difficult time, as you know, our Lord. Have mercy upon them. Amid our sorrow, we are also understanding the truth that you, who is the one, supreme, almighty, has plans for the nations and people of earth. This belief has provided us hope and a future. So help us to use the wisdom and power of salvation that we may save even the dying people throughout the 50 states and numerous towns of our nation from now. O oh Lord, pour out your wisdom and power of salvation upon us. Finally, we ask you to give the same salvation as we are expecting to receive to the rest of people around the world. For this, we pray. Amen.
Why society tries to change his story We no longer want to hear the gospel true God reached down to earth one day He said I have to find a way To save my people from their awful Thank you all once again for joining us for this time of gathering and prayer in honor of the National Day of Prayer. And although we could not meet in person as usual, we do give thanks that we're blessed with the means to not only gather, but offer this to all people in this time of pandemic, of fear and anxiety as we stay at home and so much is shut down out of the safety for all, that we want to give thanks first to Lynn Korvaleski of Bethel United Methodist Church in Dagsboro, Delaware, for organizing this event once again. We give thanks for the Reverend Blair Hall for organizing the technological aspect and all clergy and lay people who came together to pray for many of the needs that are affecting us right now. We ask everyone to continue to pray for our country, our communities, and our state in this time as we go through this pandemic and we hope and pray and look to a time when things begin to open up when it is safe and well but until that time continue to pray continue to care for one another and we look forward to seeing you in person as we gather on this day next year thank you again and be blessed